It's definitely windy. All right, folks, welcome back to the channel and to another Hickory Hacker course vlog. This week, we're at Metamore Fields Golf Club in Metamore, Illinois. This is a newer course, but we're playing some old golf, 1890s gutty golf to be specific. This is day two of the Oddball event hosted by Denny and Kathy Lane of Hickory Lane Feathery. Day one was the round of feathery golf I played at Hillcrest Golf Course. Check that out if you haven't. I'm excited to announce that the new sponsor for my gutty golf rounds going forward is McIntyre Golf Company. McIntyre makes very cool period correct replica golf balls from the Hickory era and I'll be using the variety of golf balls they offer for pre-1900 gutty golf. Today's ball is the limited flight braid to go with my 1890s irons and my Stuart and Jacoby gutty golf sandbag. Here's the scorecard for the front nine at Metamora. We're playing the red tees for the most part and we're going to need that extra distance assistance because the wind was blowing today. Here's one of my playing partners, Brad Carando. We're using sand tees as well. Here's Andy Grow from Michigan. You'll see Andy on the channel later this year. We're gonna be doing a little tour of uh, some old courses in Michigan together. And here's a new Hickory golfer, Ken Farino. And there's me. Customary slice off the first tee. That's all right. Just getting it out there is half the battle for me these days. So yeah, you're going to hear wind blowing throughout this entire round. It was uh, pretty tough. There aren't many trees, or at least many mature trees here at Metamora. Uh, so it plays more like a lynx course from that perspective. It actually plays pretty well with hickory clubs in general. There aren't too many forced carries that you're going to see. And uh, we are playing a full 18 holes here at Metamora. So this was the first round of 18 holes of gutty golf I'd ever played. Um, and uh, one of my first rounds of the 2022 season with gutty uh, clubs as well. So you're going to see me working out some kinks in the swing here in the early going. But uh, there are some good shots to be had and, and to be seen over the course of this round. Uh, and there's one right there from Ken. That was excellent. Yeah, I mentioned Ken was, I think this is probably very, very Ken's good. second round of Hickory Golf. And uh, he was admittedly a little confused as to the great format. Shot. There's a great shot from Brad out of the sand as well. Um, he was a little confused about what kind of clubs and balls were different from pre-1935 Hickory Golf to pre-1900. So he kind of uh, <laughs> jumped out into the deep end with Hickory Golf playing this round with us. Um, yeah, I think he was using his standard pre-1935 Hickory clubs, but with the limited flight ball. So... When I told him that he didn't have to use that ball for every round of hickory golf, he was relieved. I told him he could use a low compression modern ball and, and uh, he'd probably have a little bit more fun as he gets used to the hickory clubs. But, you know, gutty golf is, is a, a thing on itself, really. And um, I can imagine it would be a little bit of a shock to the system. You step up to the tee and you hit what you think is a pretty good shot and it doesn't go that far. This was actually Brad's second shot, I gotta be honest there. He hit the first one into the water, but second shot's always the best in those situations. So I mentioned before on the channel the benefit of wearing a jacket while playing. I mean, today I really needed it because it was cold in addition to being windy, uh, but I really thought that the limited movement that the jacket kind of caused in my swing really helped. There's a great putt from Andy. Uh, so you're going to see that later on as I get comfortable with the Kelly Leonard play club off the tee that I really benefited from the limited movement in my backswing wearing the jacket. And uh, I'd like to wear a jacket more often. Just uh, it's a little too warm right now to do it. All right, number three, first par five of the course. Only playing it at 388, but it's going to feel a lot longer than that. Yeah, one of the things that's interesting about Metamora is the sight lines off the tee kind of uh, fool you as to where the, the hole is going. Oh, look at that. Go, yeah. go, get, get, get Andy get, actually get, meant get, to go get. left there, but uh, hit a slice and actually found the Perfect. spot of the fairway you want to be in. So I kind of like that about this course that, um, you know, off the tee, you kind of have to know the course or, or pick the right line by, by chance <laughs> to a degree. 
Um, but uh, once you play it more, I, I bet it becomes a lot more fun in figuring out the different angles you can take into certain holes. One thing I can tell you for sure is that you're not supposed to be over here on this right side. Just using the lofter there, though, to get myself back into play, and that worked out okay. Yeah, so in addition to getting used to the uh, irons in this round, you also have to get used to the limited flight ball and how far, or I should say, how much less you end up hitting a good shot. Uh, you just kind of have to temper your expectations, put good sweet spot contact on the ball. And, um, you know, like hickory golf in general, um, you know, gutty golf takes the ground game even more to an extreme. You know, feathery, definitely you want to use the ground most of the time. Gutty's kind of a hybrid where you can get some Great distance shot. in the air with the ball uh, and you can chip, you know, pretty much like you would with any other ball like you just saw Andy do there. But in general, you're going to be more successful if you can figure out ways to use the ground to advance the limited flight braid and the gutta percha park made by McIntyre. They also feel harder off the putter, but I don't mind that. Um, I, I like the way that they putt, and uh, obviously it's working out all right for me so far. All right, moving on to number four. It's a par four, 236 yards. Got a nice little pot bunker in the middle of the fairway at a kind of a spot where most people probably end up landing from the, the further back tees, but we're obviously playing from the reds here. Yeah, and that was the first really good swing I put on the ball with the Kelly Leonard McEwen Play Club. Put me in a nice position here to use the Cannon Taylor Mashie for a run up and a attempt at one less than par. Notice again, didn't say birdie because the birdies weren't invented yet until after 1900. I'll take a par any day though. All right, number five, par three, 122 yards. This hole really messed with my eyes for some reason. I don't know what I was thinking here off the tee. First, we'll, we'll watch a nice shot from Andy. Nice shot. But I, I guess I didn't even look at the card and I just pulled the McEwen Play Club uh, because I figured it was maybe a, a sh another short par four or something, but it did not look like a par three to me off the tee and uh, ended up being the right club anyway because of the wind. I, I don't even really know how fast the wind speed was here, but it was at least a two, three club uh, wind on certain sp at certain spots. Not much I could do to you know limit the wind noise in the microphone on this day. All right, number six, par five, 439 yards. This was a beast with the wind. Brad's got a really nice medium level trajectory when he hits his ball well and uh, had several shots like that in this round. Unlike that, that's pretty much the shot you don't want to hit on a windy day, you know, popping it up like that. Fortunately, I got a little bit of distance out of it, but I'm still a ways away here. That's a little too low. <laughs> I was trying to hit my my stinger, uh, which is uh, kind of funny to call it that. But basically, I'm putting my weight on my left foot, and then um, the, the ball is further back in my stance, and, and I use my Peter Paxton 30-degree general iron for that shot. I tried to do it again there as well. I figured that would be the ideal shot for a day like this. And then this was just an experiment. I had never hit the uh, Kelly Leonard play club off the fairway, and uh, I'm not going to do it again because I didn't really like how that worked out. This is kind of my go-to club, though, from maybe 120 yards in. That was not a good shot. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those holes where you just see a lot of distance. You have a lot of wind in your face, and you figure you got to hit the ball harder than you should. And I would imagine that the wind is one of Metamora's primary defenses pretty much all throughout the spring and early summer. Like a lot of the courses in, you know, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, wind in the spring, you, you got to get used to wind in the spring if you want to play golf. And the wind doesn't bother me. I actually really kind of enjoy playing in wind. It uh, forces you to create different shots than you normally would and try some different things and Later on in the round, you'll see some of those things actually pan out for me. All right, number seven is par four, 277 yards. 
Another beautiful tee shot from Brad. And that was okay. Went straight. Found a little bit of fairway on the right side there, so I'm all right. And that is the stinger, but unfortunately that's also the water. Yeah, so I was happy that I got the shot, you know, that I actually hit the shot I was trying to, to hit, uh, just didn't put it in the right spot. So I had to take a penalty there. As far as scoring goes for the event, it was just a, you know, gross net uh, event and very casual at that. I'm keeping track of Stableford points. Uh, if you've watched my gutty rounds in the past, you know that that's how I like to keep track of the gutty rounds, um, just to kind of you know, make it a little more interesting for myself. Uh, so I'm keeping track of Stableford points, but the, I'll show you the gross and net scores at the end of uh, each nine at the end of the round as well. I don't even know who won the event. That's how informal it is. We don't really try to do too much pomp and circumstance with that. It's just a good time. All right, moving on to number eight, another par three, 150 yards. I'm using the Paxton General Iron off the tee. Hit that a little fat, so it came up short on the left side there by that bunker. That's a little better. One of the big things I've noticed lately about my game is that I really need to spend more time at the range, not hitting balls off the, off the driving range, but actually just spending time at the putting area and chipping area and working on my short game. Because there's, no there's no excuse for the putting woes that I've had lately. I, I can be practicing those every day if I wanted. All right, moving on to number nine, par four, 340 yards. Got water on the left, but as you can see, this fairway, like most of them here at Metamora, is pretty generous. And I should have asked Ken about this after the round since it was only his second round, I believe, with Hickory Clubs, but generally speaking, a course like this plays really well for a beginner with Hickory Clubs because there aren't too many areas where you can lose a ball. I know Ken lost a few here and there, um, but stray shots off the tee usually find some area where you, you, you'll be able to find the ball. Uh, at least as far as I could tell, playing this course in the early spring. Maybe the grass gets a little taller later in the year, later in the season, but um, right now it, it felt like it was generous off the tee, and um, I don't believe I lost a, a braid during this. No, I take that back. I did, I did lose a, a ball later on, but um, not as many as I usually do. And when you're playing with the McIntyre balls, which are a little pricier, you kind of reserve the holes that you use those balls on in certain situations because you just don't want to lose it. And I didn't feel like I had to do that too much here at Metamora, which was cool. I haven't talked much about the putter yet. This is my Circa 1894 Willie Park Jr. patent putter. The first putter to have a bent neck design. Put pretty well with it today so far. All right, so I wrapped up the front nine with a 55 gross 43 net. Um, you know, at up, ups and downs, but I'm feeling a little more comfortable. And let's see how I do on the back nine here. Number 10 is a par four, 306 yards. This one goes straight into the wind though. You don't hear it yet, but every shot on this hole is gonna be really challenged by the wind. So off the tee here, you've got kind of a ridge that you're just trying to get the ball down to, to get more distance. And so that's where we're all trying to put the ball. Andy got a little unlucky there coming up short of the ridge. But there's a great shot from Ken. Exactly what you wanted to do. Yeah, there's a nice little speed slot on that left side of the fairway to feed the ball down. And I set up to use my stinger there. Went a little bit higher than I expected it to, but I still made it over the ridge, so I was happy. And there's another good shot with the Paxton General Iron. Came just short of this little creek. Thank you. Oh, well done. Well done. Nice job. It's 
pretty happy with that approach with the Taylor Mashi as well. So now I just want to show you, you'll see this in a second, a little bit closer, but the 13 degrees on the Willie Park Jr. bent neck putter, a little bit hard to get used to at first, but um, I like it. I think it's fun. And this is a challenging kind of situation to use a putter like that on because it's a modern green. But the 13 degrees were obviously designed for a thicker, longer green. And uh, once you get used to that little kind of chipping aspect to the putter, it's a lot of fun to use. All right, number 11, par 3, 101 yards. Seems pretty straightforward here off the tee. I don't know what happened there. He's trying to use the Taylor's mash. I might have been trying to hit it too hard. That was good contact there, but a, a little too good. Sent me over the green into that bunker. Bunkers here at Metamora were uh, pretty easy to navigate out of for the most part. But they put them in some tricky spots, and I found both of them almost here on this hole. Yeah, I kind of made a mess of this one. Maybe, maybe. Oh, good effort. Give it a run. All right, see if I can bounce back on the par five here. Number 12, 397 yards. There is a great shot from Andy. Andy uh, had to start using his iron, his mid iron off the tee because the handle on the splice neck brassy I sold him the day before broke. So I felt bad about that. And it's one of those things you just don't know is going to happen until you start playing with the club. But it should be a pretty easy fix with the splice extension. I have a video about that that I'll link to if the situation happens to you. And a nice drive there for myself off the tee. But then I even stepped away from that ball because I wanted to make sure I got good contact on it. And I, I guess it just got in my head there and hit it into the creek. So taking a penalty there. Fortunately, got the Paxton General Iron to get that ball up and back into the fairway. There's a good swing with the Paxton General Iron. Got myself over the ridge where, where the bunker is there. From my vantage point back there, it looked like the bunker was closer to the green than it actually was. There's a great putt from Andy, just short. So you notice more houses here in the back nine, but there are also areas in between the holes where you can see that uh, they're probably gonna build more houses. So if you wanna experience this course in more of a pastoral setting definitely try to get out here within the next year or so though they look like they were building pretty quick all right so i wanted to show you the tea that andy's been using uh andy came across that uh it was a michigan inventor back in the turn of the century who came up with this tea and somebody made some replicas of it and uh i tried it there and i i liked it i think it's a cool alternative to sand um andy's going to send me one of those at some point and i'll talk a little bit more about it in a future video specifically the person who made it and uh, that kind of thing. But, you know, as you might imagine, there were a lot of different inventions at the turn of the century related to teas, people trying to come up with alternatives to sand. It'd be cool, actually, to try a bunch of different ones of those if I could find them and talk about the history of them. I like this little grass feature here on this hole. I often find myself in situations on golf courses where I get to show you the more interesting features by being in the wrong spots. And uh, I don't mind that because, I mean, the, the real in the purpose of these videos is to kind of showcase the golf course I'm playing in a lot of cases, a lot of situations. So, you know, the, the, the score is secondary for me when I'm filming around. And uh, I would actually rather be in a situation where you can see an interesting aspect to a hole uh, and have a higher score because of it for the video's sake. All right, number 14, par 3, 112 yards. Nice swing there from Andy. Got himself right in the middle of the green.
Pretty happy with that shot too for myself with the Taylor Mashy. Ken's phone started ringing right in the middle of his swing, but he didn't let it bother him. Good shot, despite the distraction. So here I have a rare one less than par attempt. It's a long one. But I've been feeling pretty good about my putting today. Yeah, I was real happy with that. All right, number 15, par four, 302 yards. This was a fun hole. Once you get off the tee, it's pretty much all downhill to the hole toward the water. Yeah, I said that then. I was feeling really good about where I was with the McEwen play club there in this round. Uh, but since then, I've had some ups and downs with it. Wish I could figure out what I was doing different in this round that helped me hit it so well and so consistent. Maybe it was the jacket. Maybe I just need to be wearing a jacket all the time. You'll see some rounds coming up on the channel later this summer where uh, I did not have the same kind of luck with that club off the tee. But here on this hole, it put me in a real good spot. And almost chipped that in for one less than par. Ken didn't want me to waste my time tapping that in for par, so he threw it back to me and we're on to 16, par five, 450 yards. Not the direction I wanted, but the contact again was crisp and uh, was real happy with the distance I got out of that, even though the wind was messing with it. And again, happy with that shot too. So kind of settling into some, you know, consistency here on the back nine. Would have been better to put that up left so that it could have taken the hill toward the green, but uh, found myself down here. Managed to get out of that okay though. Up to this point, pretty happy with how I've played this hole. But then... The wind really kicked up during that stroke, and uh, it, it, it made me feel like I needed to hit it a little bit harder than I should have. And then, and then the tragedy of a three-putt after a decent approach to the green. All right, number 17, par 4, 292 yards. Yeah, I was in my head after that three putt on that tee shot there, and I um, was not happy with that at all. Ken had a nice one there, though. So, not far off the tee here and a long ways from the hole yet, using the Paxton General Iron. That's pretty good. Definitely made this hole tougher than it should have been. Uh, being so short off the tee. Fortunately, I stayed right of this bunker, but then I had to chip over it. So I'm using the McEwen lofter here, circa 1895. Really didn't use that club very much in this round. I don't know if you noticed, but pretty much just used the Taylor Mashey, the Paxton General Iron, the um, uh, McEwen Play Club, and obviously my putter. So four clubs essentially for most of my shots in this round. It kind of goes to show that you really don't need too many clubs to play gutty golf. All right, number 18, going home, par four, 377 yards. It's on the opposite side of the water that number nine is. Brad finishes off what was a very nice, consistent day off the tee with another great drive there. A little bit better for me, but not as good as I had a few holes prior. Still straighten in the fairway, can't complain too much. Andy was really grooving his mid-iron. He's using it off the tee and then obviously off the fairway. And, uh, you know, again, because you're using a limited flight ball, you're not losing too much 
off the tee using an iron versus your your wood. Obviously, you want to use the wood if you can, the splice neck. But um, in lieu of that, he was he was making do with the mid iron. Had the wind behind me on this one, so I definitely put too much on that chip. And uh, finally, even after all of this wind, this was the first time the camera decided to fall. And it was an inopportune time because I ended up chipping that close. <laughs> That's where my chip ended up after the first muff chip. But uh, yeah, it figures that my best chip of the round would get lost because of a camera that fell over. Ken's going to clean things up for us. And we're going to wrap up this round of gutty golf here at Metamore Fields. Thanks for watching, folks. Finished the back nine with a 52 gross, 41 net. For a total of 106 gross, 83 net, and 25 Stableford points. Pretty happy with how I played on the back nine. Uh, raised my nine hole average to 54 gross, 42 net. And my Stableford average is 13 points for nine holes. So I was a little bit off the pace on the front nine, but uh, picked it up on the back nine. All right, folks, that's it for this week. Really appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed this round of Gutty Golf, and I'll be back next week with another video. In the meantime, here's one from the archive for you to check out, and if you enjoyed any aspect of this video, I hope you will press like and will subscribe if you're not already. Thanks, folks, for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.